their understanding of this question? What are they asking us to do? Find the derivative. Okay, find the derivative. I mean, that's a step in solving the problem, but what are they, what's the question? Asks, what's the slope at point zero six? Is the, the question says, what's tell the me the slope, slope at point zero six. That's the question? No. No, that's not the question. How, how could you possibly use a tangent line to make an approximation of a function? How do you mean by that? Yes, how so? Okay. You can, you can find, I'm trying to remember because when we find Sarah back here, she's got, she's ready to go here. Yes. Sarah. Okay, so if the tangent line is derivative, then we can... Wait, wait, wait. Find. Are you telling me what to do and how to find the answer? I want to know what the question is asking. What does it want us to find out? Oh. The derivative, and then... Does it say find the derivative? It doesn't say find the derivative. It, it does say find the tangent using, line, which... Using the Using the tangent line. Yeah. Using the tangent okay. line. But it doesn't say use a derivative. What does it want us to figure out? Find the y value x point zero six. Okay, so now we're getting closer. When the y find the y value, are we gonna find the actual y value of the function? What? We're gonna find an estimate of it. Okay, we're gonna estimate it. We're not gonna find the actual y value. Okay, so we're getting somewhere near we got a square root function. I don't know, let's say it looks something like that. Why, why guess? Why don't we just go ahead and look at the graph? Uh, function, the square root, can we use our, we can't, but uh, I mean, even, even though we can't, we can use the, the calculator uh, as, a, as a visual for you right now. But if you didn't have your calculator on the oh, test, yeah. that wouldn't oh. be a big deal. Yes, dear, we're using the, we're using the tangent line yes. to find the y at 0 0.06. Yes. Where is so, this graph? Uh, like, and so we, um, oh. So, so in another term, is it correctly just saying we are trying to derivative when x equals 0. OK, so this is this wavy line. Okay, we can see what that graph looks like. And here is point, here, here is zero, and here's point zero six, right, right next to it. So imagine that at that point it's curvy like that. Okay, and here's the y-axis, and here's the point at uh, x is zero. Yeah. So can someone come up and like draw a picture? Probably. Yeah. And draw a picture. Yeah. Okay, show us what it's saying. How are we going to use this tangent line? Oh. Okay. Oh. Um, this is the tangent line. Yes. And the y axis point. Um, what we're trying to find is this. Maybe you're a few comma. What? You use the comma <laughs> instead of the decimal. It's, oh. You know, weird. Change in y uh, on the tangent line from here, from here to here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why are we trying to find the y? Well, we are trying to find the y. Everybody looking? Yeah. We're using the y on the tangent line to approximate the y on the actual graph. So you can see. So right. Here's 0 0.06, and here's the y value on the tangent line. Here is the y value just barely below that, the actual y value of the function. So we can find the y value on the line 
obtuse, and we'll say that's going to be really close because 0 0.06 and 0 are not that far away from each other. So if we just move over to 0 0.06, the y value on the line and the y value on the graph, they're going to be very close. near each other. Okay. Well, now obviously we're going to use the tangent line. We clearly have to find the derivative. So let's find the derivative. Could someone set me through the derivative? Uh, or one, well, I'll make it a little bit easier. We can do yeah. 9 plus sine 2x to 1 half. Okay, yeah. it's instead of this, right? Yeah. To the 1 half power. Yeah, okay. just so 1 times it. 9 plus sine 2x. 1 half. 9 plus sine of 2x. Yeah. Negative, one negative 1 half. To the negative 1 half yeah. power. And and nine, nine, nine plus 0. Times, well, no, Wait, Two cosine times two x times ten. And then times two. Plus zero. Nine plus zero to negative one half times one. Are you plugging zero? Yeah. Plugging zero. What is? We plugging zero. What would that tell us? The slope. The tangent line. Pretty good. So these one halves cancel out. So we got nine plus. What's the sign of, uh, well, 0 times 2 is 0. So what's the sign of 0? Zero? Zero. 0. 0. We're going to take the square root of that in the denominator. Times, what's the cosine? Uh, let's see, 2 times 0 is 0. What's the cosine of 0? One. 1. 1 times, oh, well, that 2 cancels with that. Two. So this is just this times 1. So we have 1 over 3. That's the slope. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and, I'll, and, and, and I'll walk you through the next part, okay? So the slope of a line, let's go back to like algebra one days. What, what's like the definition of the slope of a line? Nine over run. Nine over run. Nine over run. So this, this like thing that we're going to call dy, the change in y, over the change in x. How big is the change in x? There, 0 0.06. Okay, dx equals 0 0.06. Okay. Um, so this y, right? I mean, we go this direction. This rise over run, rise over run, should be the slope of the line, right? Yeah. So if we take dy over dx, that should give us the slope of the line, which of course has dy over 0 0.06. That ratio should be how much? One third. One third. That's the slope. It's our, we already know it's one third. So we're going to solve for dy. So just okay. multiply point zero six. Point zero six by both sides. So that's point zero six divided by three. So that's point zero two. Point two. Point two. Point zero two. Okay. So dy is point zero two. Is that it? Yeah. That's our answer. Answer eight. Wait. Okay, we're so close, but not there yet. No. Because what? What did we say at the very beginning? We're going to approximate the what? The y value. The y value. That's the y value. That is just the change in y. Oh, the change in y from here to there. So we need to know where that is. What y value that is to start with, and then add point zero two to it. How do we figure out what that y value is? Just solve the initial step. Solve it. Yeah. Or plug in. Plug in x yeah. equals zero. Okay, so x equals zero, that's zero, that's nine, two to the one half, that's three. Yeah? So that's three right there. Y equals three. And from here to there is 0 0.02. So, so our <coughs> approximate, right, f of 0 0.06 is approximately 3.02. Does that estimate needs a E. <laughs> it's been up here the whole time, you guys. Oh, that was really I embarrassing. Shortening up. I didn't even notice. It was really embarrassing. I can't remember you said anything. Estimate. Uh, estimate. Uh, there was no E on estimate. Or estimate. <laughs> At least that means we were paying attention to what you were currently doing. You're not like spacing out. Very true. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bright side finder, English. like real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was my nice and positive way. <laughs> Everybody's writing that down. <laughs> what other questions eight is there? Ten. What? Eight or ten. Eight or ten. Eight. Mm. Okay. Oh, this is, this is easy. Yes.
Who said eight or ten? What? Which one? Uh, no. But then somebody said. You eight. Did you have a practice? I said eight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just pick eight at random? No. Well, okay. No. no. Right. The point moves along a curve. Y equals x squared plus one. You don't need a calculator to know what that looks like. It's a parabola. That's so there's a point, and it's moving along the curve at a rate such that uh, the x coordinate is changing at a rate of three halves. So that x coordinate, you can imagine, is changing at a constant rate. Okay, but if that if if it's shooting a point up onto the the parabola, you can imagine that out here, from here to there, that y change is huge compared to the y change from here to there, very tiny. Right. So the rate at which y is changing is itself changing depending on where we are on the x-axis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the rate in units per second at which the distance from the origin, oh my goodness, this is a difference question. The distance from the origin is changing when the point has a coordinate of one, two, okay? So let's say this is a point on the graph. It's moving along, its x coordinate is changing at a constant rate. They want to know the distance from the origin. What's the distance from the origin look like? Mm -hmm. it's just straight line. From? Or, oh, it's, it's tangent line. Could it be a tangent line? No. no, not necessarily. It could, it's a couple of points be a tangent line. If the tangent line happens to go through the origin. Okay. So it's just this distance right here. Yeah. Don't mistake it for the tangent line. It's not the tangent line necessarily. It's just a line that goes from the origin to the point on the graph. Right? So if it's way up here, then the distance to the origin is like that. Oh, so it could be like the hypotenuse. It could be like the hypotenuse of a triangle. That's a great start. Yeah. Uh, so we got right, this x and this y are the legs of the triangle, and the distance is, uh, is uh, the hypotenuse. We call that distance d. Does that work? We want to find the rate at which the distance is changing from the origin. Okay. So in terms of calculus, what are we looking for? Um, D D D D Okay. Yeah. D or D T. D two. D T. Yeah. Because look at how it says per second. Yeah. Is time. Okay. D D D T. If we call this D. Question is, what is this? When uh, x equals one and y equals two? Okay. Yes. Okay. So in order to find this, it's a related phrase problem. We got to set up an equation that when we take the derivative, we get this as part of the derivative, right? So we need a function that defines d, so that we can take the derivative. Okay, so how can we find d given what we know? Um, x, okay, the square root of x squared. Square plus root of x squared plus y squared. Y squared. And what, if we put y here, right, this is going to be another variable. Can we define y in terms of some other variable that simplifies this whole thing? Uh, I forgot. X squared plus x squared one. X squared plus one, yeah. That's how you find y. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh squared. Uh, Right, see what we're doing? We're using the Pythagorean theorem to find d. And d is the square, yeah, no, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except for this is x squared plus y squared equals d squared. And then we take the square root of both sides, and now we know what d is. Okay? Uh, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to take the square root of both sides if we're trying to figure out what d is, but then think we're trying to take the derivative. Mm -hmm. And what have we made for ourselves? We've made a function within a function within a function, we got a lot of chain rule, a lot of unpacking to do. So if you do that, it's going to be fine, but I think we're setting ourselves up for possible mistakes. So maybe if we leave the square here, then take the derivative and then solve for d, d, dt. It's just an idea. All right, so what's the derivative of d squared in terms of t, with respect to t? 2d. 2d to the first times d, 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 t. You are right. Derivative of x squared. D, 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 t. 
dx dt dx plus two times x squared plus one. Uh, yeah, we could do that. You know what else we could do? We could just expand this out. It wouldn't take very long. Just multiply that parentheses times itself. Oh god, yeah. So that then we could just take the derivative of each of these. Four x to the third plus four x. Four x to the third dx dx dt plus. 4x dx dt plus zero. Well, what are we looking for? D d dt. D dt. That's what I'm So we solve for d d dt. Yeah. D d dt is equal to all of this. Ah, that's a lot of stuff. I'm going to just factor out a dx dt. Um, and actually, this is a 6x, right? 6x. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. So I can factor out an x. I got 2x from 6x and a, and a 2x from 4x to the third. Okay. So we've got 3 plus 2x squared. 2x squared. I could double check the number to make sure that. If we distribute these two things, we get all of this. Keep it in mind that we added these together to make six x. Divided by 2d. You can't let those two together. Great. Let's let those twos. So you have to write 2d prime or can we say this 2d? Where? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wait, where did you get Sorry, that's a, that's a 1. Oh, OK. I accidentally wrote on there instead of a uh, so the twos cancel. Let's fill in everything that we know, which should be everything on this side. dx dt. Three halves times x. One. Uh, times three plus two times x squared over d. Now we need to know what d is. Solve yeah. for d. Here's an equation that tells us d. Solve for d given that x is 1. So 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 2, squared. Five. It's 5. That's d squared. So d is the square root of 5. Square root of 5. Multiply this straight across and take the reciprocal of, of square root of 5, we get 1 over 5, so we get 15 over 2 root 5. Take a look at the answers, and we're really happy that we've done our work and none of these answers match. So, what do we do? Rationalize, rationalize. Yeah. rationalize the denominator. Square root of 5, square root of 5, 15 root 5. Over what? Two. And yeah. Yeah. remember, square root of five times square root of five is. Oh, five. but then you can you can. You simplify to three over two. B. Three root five over two. B. Okay. We done did it. We done did it. <laughs> What's the next one? Yes. You don't have to stay on part A. Go part B. Three response. Twelve over fifteen. Twelve over fifteen. Let's do 13 real quick because that's not too difficult. All they're doing is punishing you. It's a simple problem, isn't it? If you only knew what? What the cotangent is. What the cotangent is? No, like what the antiderivative is. What the antiderivative is. So look in your books. 
Somebody's got a book, right? Very front. Antiderivative of cotangent. Uh, uh, oh, I got a negative. Or a natural log of the sine of t for a new student. Say again? Natural log of? Natural log of the absolute value of the sine of x. Oh. Plus c. But we don't need plus c because we're going to do fundamental theorem of capitals, right? Found it. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. Is this right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, also show you how you can use, uh, yeah, why this? If it's the natural log, there must be some kind of a du over u, right? 1 over x kind of a situation. <coughs> if you write this as cosine over sine, you'll see how that is the case. Mm -hmm. But here's the, here's the antiderivative. So this is going to be the natural log, the absolute value of sine of x from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And we don't have our calculator, so this natural log stuff must be some fairly easy values. Or they have it in terms of natural log, so yeah, we don't have to worry about it. We got uh, the natural log of sine. What's the sine of pi over 2? 1. 1. Okay, the natural log of 1 minus the natural log. What's the sine of pi over 6? Um. It's a half. Square root of 1 over 2. Yeah. Square root of 1 is 1. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, natural log of 1 half. What's the natural log of 1? E. No. Right. It's a new You don't have to do that, though, do you? Because it's in. Do you, does it say? Does it, do any of the answers look like this? No. No, not quite. Can you just Wait, can divide you just those until you're subtracting? Yeah. What's that? Can't you just divide? It would be natural log of 1 over the so okay so natural log of one over one half oh so two, two. natural log of two yeah. B. B. but maybe you'll maybe on the day of the test you'll be in this mode of knowing what the natural log of one is what's the natural log of one the question is e to what power zero. is one zero so that's zero so we get negative natural log of one half well now what do we do that's not on here Thinking none of these. Oh, you can take one half to negative one. Yes, because this guy could come up and be the exponent, right? Just like we can divide them because we're subtracting, we can use this is called the, the power uh, property um, logarithms. And one half to the negative one is two, so still half log two. All right, so that wasn't so bad. We just needed to know what the antiderivative of cotangent was. Yeah. yeah. That's not what I'll figure out. And then, is the antiderivative of the, the tangent, like the net, just the natural log of the cosine? Say this again? Would it be the natural log of the cosine? No, negative natural log of the cosine? Is the natural log of the secant? Natural log of the cosine. <laughs> the antiderivative of the tangent? Natural log of the secant? Natural log, negative natural log of the cosine. Negative natural log of the cosine. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, what's next? Those are little things like they're going to maybe throw one of those at you where you're going to need to know the antiderivative of some cotangent or tangent or secant. Uh, so if you got everything down pat, go memorize those things. Go, you know, just memorize all that, that little stuff that might come up. The antiderivative, the, remember the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared was the, the uh, arc tangent? Um, little stuff like that. It's like, you know, it might be in there and it might not, so we, we can spend too much time talking about it in class. Can we spend? Ten back here. Phase two, two, two squares. Okay. All right. So remember how we talked about solids? So this is like a set of axes that's laying down on the table. We got this graph: the fourth root of one minus x squared. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. So 
intersection perpendicular to the x-axis is square with one h. Oh, base of the solid is the first quadrant region of this thing. So it's got to somehow like if they're just telling you the first quadrant, it couldn't be like this, right? Like just some function that goes off like that forever, because there is no first quadrant region. It just never ends. You see what I mean? So it just wouldn't, it wouldn't stop. There's a region over here trapped in the second quadrant. So it must look like that in the first quadrant. Okay. So maybe it looks like that. We don't really need to know what it looks like. We just need to know what we're talking about here. So we got some shape where the cross section is a square. Okay, so I'll show you like the cross section of it. Of course, there's the rest of it is here. We want to, for any cross section, we want to be able to find the area of the cross section. And then, using this guy from, uh, well, whatever A and B are, we need to find where, you know, does, it, does it cross the Y axis or does it look more like this? Does it come up and just cross the X axis in two places? How does it trap this region in the first quadrant? What's that? Zero to one. Is it from zero to one? How'd you figure that out? Make y equals zero. Yeah. Now where does it cross the x-axis? Okay. Um, minus one and one. So. Minus one and one. So it must look a little bit more like well, that doesn't look like that. Kind of symmetrical. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So we figured that out. We took the fourth root of 1 minus x squared, set it equal to 0. 1 minus x squared equals 0. x squared equals 1. x equals plus or minus 1. Right? You take the square root of both sides. So it must be from 0 to 1. Okay, Can you define the area of a cross section that's a square? The side length squared. So how big is the side length y squared? Y is defined by the fourth root of one minus x squared. Fourth root of one minus x squared squared uh, dx. Can those cancel out like fourth root squared to make it just the square root? Sure. We can we can make our feel make ourselves feel more confident about that if we make this to the one fourth power, and then take this to the second power. We multiply these, and so we get the one half power. So it's just the square root. But it's probably easier to leave it as the one half power to take the antiderivative. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm looking for this to be u. Find oh. du out here. But for that to be du, we would need like an x factor, x. Yeah, and that just makes things messy. Is one minus x squared uh, our tangent? Or is that just one over one minus x. Or one over one plus x. Uh, take a look and see if see what the one minus x squared. But then again, it's there are some some pi factors. I think that should be interesting. It's inside the square root.
function x squared plus y squared equals 1. If you were to graph that, it would be a circle with a radius of 1. If you solve for y, we get our function over there, 1 minus x squared, square root of 1 minus x squared. So, this is the area of a quarter of a circle. So, so what's the area of a circle that has a radius of one? So the quarter of that would be four. <laughs> I've taken a lot of practice tests. I just bought this book, and this is the first time I've seen a question like that. Where they say that's like a circle. So, um, only a quarter of a circle. Where is that? So this is the area from zero to one yeah. of the square root of one minus x squared. Okay. So this, as we look at it, we can think of it as the area under the curve, this curve, from zero to one. Right? And this curve is just that. Oh. It's not this, because this would be the negative square root of one minus x squared. This is the positive square root of one minus x squared. So we just this is the area of that. Right, so that's the radius of the thing. Okay. okay. And then that area is what gives us the volume of so that thing. Okay. Pi over four. Okay. The next question. Do thirty two. That's on part B, right? Uh, yep. So we have our calculators. Let's Sketch shows graphs of x squared minus y squared minus 5, y minus x equals k. Right. So the regions labeled a and b have equal areas if k equals okay. So like that, like that. And we want the areas to be the same. So the first thing would be to do what? Set them equal to each other. Set what equal to each other? If you find the derivative and you set it equal to zero, you'll find in this place where the slope is zero. Okay, so we need to find where it crosses the x-axis. Yeah. Okay. And here's how we speed up the process. X squared minus four x uh, minus five. Calculate the zeros. You've already done it? I 
maybe, so maybe factoring it and solving it that way is faster. Okay. Uh, all right, so you got negative one and five. So this, you know, keep. Yep, negative one and five. All right. Now we know that. Now we know what it intersects at negative one and five. Now what are we going to do? Remember, we're just trying to figure out what k has to be equal to so that the areas are equal. Find the area from zero to five? Negative one to five. Negative one to five. Oh. Okay, that's definitely going to be faster this way. Find the area from negative one to five. Negative 36. All right, so now we know that. Okay. So we're just trying to figure out now. There's some line that's over yeah, here. that one. Where will that line have to be so that the area under that is 36? Yeah. Well, how do we find the area underneath that, you know, in, in here? It's, what? Um, what yeah, from, five to to from 5 to k. Then what? Equals 36. Equals 36. And then solve for k. So we got uh, 1 third x to the third minus um, 2x squared minus 5x okay, from 5 to k. That needs to be equal to 36. 1 third k to the third minus 2 times k squared minus 5k um, minus 1 third times x to the third, or sorry, 5 to the third, um, minus 2 times 5 squared minus 5 times 5, and that needs to be equal to 36. Okay. So here's how we can, we know it needs to be equal to 36. We're trying to solve for k. Right? So if you moved everything over here, we have the k's on one side. We're trying to figure out when this, uh, let's see, equal to, I guess we do it a couple different ways. If we subtract 36 from both sides, then we'll have. Uh, negative 36 plus all this minus all this equals zero. Okay. So this could be a function that we could either simplify or not. We could just give it in its sloppy form to the calculator and figure out when it equals zero. Does that make sense?
three. Okay. Anybody check that to make sure we did it right? The answer D. Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, group. Let's go to our use. 